Hello everyone. Hello. It's lovely to see you all. Welcome back to our study series in Ezekiel. For those watching online, we have just read through together Ezekiel chapter 35. So if you can please pause this video now and read through Ezekiel chapter 35 for yourself. And don't forget to like and share this video. Shall we come to the Lord in prayer? Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord God, we thank you for your Son, Jesus, who redeems us with grace. May we take this gift of himself and share him with all that we know. Help us, Lord, to heal old wounds and reconcile with those whom we have departed company with so that Christ can be glorified in and through our community of love. Amen. 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 So Ezekiel chapter 35, if you can have it open in front of you please. Um, we come here uh, this week to the judgment of Eden, also known as Mount Seir. And uh, the Edomites, they're in real trouble here. Because not only does Ezekiel prophesy against them, but so does Jeremiah in Jeremiah 49, verses 7 to 22. And Isaiah gives them what for too in Isaiah chapter 63. So, the people of Eden, Mount Seir, they've got it coming. They're in, they're in loads of bother. Verse 6, because you did not hate bloodshed, bloodshed will pursue you. That's not good, is it? Verse 8, I will fill your mountain with the slain. So what is God's problem with Edom to warrant the prophet's rebuke? Well, what we have here in chapter 35 is an ancient ethnic feud. There's two people groups involved, Israel and the Edomites, that for centuries have absolutely hated each other. So much so that the Edomites actually teamed up with the Babylonian forces to capture Jerusalem. And now that Israel and Judah, they, they have fallen, Edom had their eyes on the prize. Verse 10, we're told that they wanted to take over the land of, of Israel. So the Lord intervenes here and makes them, verse 14, desolate. The cause of this ethnic, centuries-old tension between these two people groups, it goes all the way back in the Bible to two characters who you'd know well, Esau, and who's the other? Jacob. Which also means that these warring people are in fact cousins, they're family. How much do you think this displeases God the Father? Now you'll remember that Esau and Jacob, they had a really troubled past, didn't they? It was a battle that in fact started in the womb. <coughs> In Genesis 25, we are told that Esau was born red. Red in Hebrew is Admonai. Can you say that with me? Admonai. Or in English, Edom. And Esau, or Edom, uh, he was born covered with hair. And Jacob followed him out of the womb, grasping his twin brother's heel. 
And Esau grew up to be a very strong and, and powerful man. He was a skilled hunter. He was a champion, born leader. And Jacob was a bit of a wimp, wasn't he? He was a uh, mummy's boy. Esau being the firstborn, he had the spiritual blessing from his father Isaac coming his way. But he sold his birthright to Jacob for some lentil stew, didn't he? Years later then, when Father Isaac was dying, he calls Esau to go out and, and, and to hunt and to catch some wild game to make him a broth that he likes. And then when he was to return to him with this, this soup, uh, Isaac was going to lay hands and, and pass the blessing on to him. But as Esau departs, Jacob, with the help of his mother, he disguises himself as Esau, doesn't he? <clears throat> he covers himself with what? Hair. Yeah. And he makes some soup with what they had available. Jacob gives it to his father. His father is then deceived, gives Jacob the family blessing instead of Esau. Now you can imagine how Esau felt. He was furious, wasn't he? Forgetting he'd sold his birthright. He was furious. And as a result, well, Jacob, he's got to run for his life. And that's where the feud begins. Jacob marries Leah and Rachel. Jacob has 12 sons. Jacob meets with God and they wrestle all night. And Jacob loses. And as a result, he becomes Israel. His sons, the tribes. And through Israel, Messiah. Here we are today as Gentiles, welcomed into God's kingdom as Israel. And this is what the people of God are, by definition. In Christ we are all Israel. What are we? Israel. Israel. Because we have all wrestled with God and lost, just as Jacob did. Amen? And Israel were given the promised land and Israel grew into a wealthy and mighty nation. And Esau's family line, the Edomites, they grew alongside and they were forever jealous and bitter. And uh, they resented the, the blessing that was given to Israel. They desired throughout their history to take what they thought was rightly theirs. And then when the time came, when King Nebuchadnezzar gave opportunity, well, Edom jumped at the chance, didn't they? And now they're being judged for, for taking what their father Esau so easily gave away. Verse 15. As you rejoiced over the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so I will deal with you. You shall be desolate. Mount Seir and all Edom, all of it, then they will know that I am the Lord. So, what does this ancient feud, this ancient ethnic feud that started centuries beforehand as a fight between brothers in a womb and then escalated to, to the fall of a nation in the Middle East two and a half thousand years ago, what has this history got to do with us today? That's the question, isn't it? Well, in this story, chapter 35, and all that leads up to it, we learn a lot about God, don't we? The God we love and serve. And that is, his blessing does not go to the proud. His blessing is not given to the independent those people who are so confident in their abilities that they would trade God's blessing for short-term material satisfaction. In Esau's case, lentil soup. No, God's blessing goes to the undeserving, amen? The broken, the weak, the fragile, 
the humble, the Jacobs, the Pastor Johns. Esau was so hungry, Jacob could have taken anything off of him. He could have said, I'll give you some of this soup for worldly goods. I'd give you some of this soup for your, your hunting bow or your sword or some of your cattle or your home or your wives. But what did Jacob choose? Esau's birthright. Jacob wanted the blessing from God that he did not deserve. He knew that such grace was of the highest value. And when the time came to take it, how did Jacob receive it? Well, he clothed himself as his father's chosen son. It's incredible, isn't it? In the same way as Christians, we know that in our sin, all of us, we're undeserving, aren't we? We don't deserve anything good from God. But in our brokenness, we value his blessing. So we take the opportunity to clothe ourselves in the righteousness of his son so that we can receive his grace. Amen? Amen. And receive it we do, don't we? What did we sing earlier? Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with 10,000 beside. Hallelujah. But being in receipt of such blessing comes with great responsibility, doesn't it? That is to show the same grace and the same love that God showed to us, to the world out there. He's redeemed us for a purpose, isn't he? Now in Deuteronomy 23 verse 7, God commands Israel not to hate the Edomites. It's a clear command. Why? Because they're your family. They are your cousins. Did Israel listen? No. King Saul and King David, they retaliated against uh, their attacks and they conquered Edom. King Solomon capitalised financially on the taking of their territory and uh, having access to the Red Sea opened up the trade routes for Israel. The Edomites were conquered, bullied and oppressed by Israel. At the time of Rome, <clears throat> the main language was Greek and the Edomites became known as the Idumeans in the Greek language. And the Idumeans later converted to Judaism and one Idumean became the Roman puppet king, Herod the Great. And he commanded the slaughter of all the babies in Bethlehem. Actions have consequences. You say that with me. Actions have consequences. If only Israel followed God's command. God's word is true. Which means in Christ... We are saved by grace. Amen? Freed from sin to live according to God's will. And his will is to love. To love everyone. Especially our family. Even if they know not God's blessing upon them even if they are bitter towards us because of God's blessing upon us. 
we have to love them even if they wish us pain. We have to love them even when we know that they will always, always, always let us down and will always bite the hand that feeds. We must honour God by loving them. Because there are always consequences when we abandon God's truth. Israel, although blessed by God, rebelled. As a, result, as a result, they welcomed the fall of Jerusalem. The Edomites' choices led to their destruction too. Just like Jacob, none of us deserve anything. We're all sneaky, we're all wimps, aren't we? But by faith we clothe ourselves in the righteousness of his chosen son his only begotten Son, Christ. And in doing so, we graciously receive the blessing of God the Father. And in this receipt, we must submit to the Holy Spirit's leading, who brings us ultimately into forgiveness. Forgiveness for ourselves and forgiveness for others, so that we can be united in a grace that overcomes even the most ancient feuds. Amen? Amen. 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 We'll leave it there.